is July. So this is what we're doing this month. We're selling the Intellectual Property School, where we're going to teach you how to do YouTube. We're going to teach you how to create a blog. We're going to teach you how to create a podcast and to make money from your intellectual property. And what we're going to do this month is include everything in the course so you become a well-rounded entrepreneur. Now, all the pricing and stuff has changed. The link is below. And you want to get in because as we add more material, you're just going to get further and further behind. So let's go ahead and get into this video. Years ago, I was taking a plane trip to California. And one of the things that I always do is I always fly first class. It's just a habit that I've picked up. And one of the reasons that I fly first class is I will normally be sitting next to someone who's interesting. This isn't always a fact. Sometimes I'll be sitting next to someone that doesn't want to talk and doesn't want to be bothered. But I would say seven, eight times out of 10, I'll be sitting next to an entrepreneur, typically. And we will have some of the best conversations. Uh, last time, <clears throat> I actually went to Florida, came back to Georgia, and on the, the way down, I was sitting next to a lady who just didn't want to be bothered. And on the way back, I was sitting next to a home builder who was in Florida because he owned a race car. Had one of the most interesting conversations you know, this man literally told me about his financing. He's like, oh, we do about 30 million a year, gross revenue. And then we were just talking and sharing. And this is something that happens between people who have done things. And I have found this over and over and over again to be the case. And this is why I laugh when I hear Rich people don't want you to have money. I, literally, and this didn't happen on a plane trip. This happened in Waffle House. And I was sitting next to a guy, and we got into a conversation about holding companies, a really, really good conversation. And later on, I found that this guy was worth $100 million. So once you enter the pathway, and let's go ahead and discuss what the pathway is. There's regular you. There's just a regular you. You're living life. You're doing things. And you haven't been exposed to money. And once you go ahead, build a business, and I'll talk about when did it happen to me. It didn't happen. I have to really, really think back when the big change happened. Um, I went from the boarding house, I went to Renegrate, panel systems, business environments, first business, second business. I'm going to say it started to happen in the storage auction business. And then it got ramified my third year on YouTube when I made seven figures because here's the thing, as a person, I was pretty much unchanged as a person, meaning I was cheap. I was really, really cheap. And I got cheap because I was in the storage auction business. And, you know, I, I'll share. Uh, I bought a unit for like 100 bucks, and I got a brand new wardrobe, polo shirts, uh, polo leather jackets, new shoes, I mean, it, you know, so being in the facility of the storage auction business made me cheap because I knew from personal experience that I could get stuff really, really cheap. And then third year of the storage auction, not the third year, third year of YouTube, I started to change. I started to change. And that's when I met the ramification of Lyndon Cameron. And then uh, I was looking at this house and the house was for rent for 2,500. Back then that was like, 
I, I was like, I ain't doing that. I ain't doing that. Because once again, even though I had the money, I had the capabilities, I was cheap from a personal standpoint. And then here I am now paying way more than that for a high rise. And once you get exposed, you go through that process of building a business, making money, and then meeting other people who make money, everything just changes. It just really, really changes because I woke up this morning and there was one of these hating comments. <laughs> I, it, it, it's funny. Um, someone that put in the comments, you bragging about making $350,000 a month. I had my people check. They couldn't find nothing. And, you know, it, it, it was really, really interesting because once again, when you become exposed to money, once you start dealing with people who are making money, like uh, the folks that I went to high school with have no clue that I own a Porsche. I would never bring it up. I would never discuss it. I would never talk it with them because most of them are pretty much doing what their parents done. They don't make a lot of money. And yet I have a group of friends that I have no problem sending them a screenshot of the Porsche because they are wealthy. Because he, here's the thing. And this is one of the things that I had to come to understand because every now and then I'll make a mistake. But when you're talking to people who've been through that process, who've been exposed, it's a different conversation because that, that, that comment this morning in my reply was, it's so sad. The jealousy is so sad because here's the thing. I have been on the planes with many, many successful entrepreneurs. Um, and they would tell me things about their lives. And not once did it occur to me that these people were bragging. Not once did it occur to me. Uh, the credit plug, you know, he commented with um, well, the exposure to the last video talking about many poor people. And he talks about he keeps seven figures in the bank. I have no doubt that that is 100% true. And you want to know why? See, when you get exposed to money and when you get exposed to success, it doesn't scare you. Uh, it doesn't make you get weird. It doesn't make you because you've been there, done that. And like I said, you know, I successful, wealthy people do not spend time thinking about the unhealthy and the unwealthy. They just don't. And when they meet someone who, based upon their conversation, is like, oh, this person's like me, it's a totally different exposure level because going back to no one, unless they see my YouTube channel, uh, no one I went to high school with knows I own a Porsche. No one knows because... You can't have those kind of conversations with people who have not been down that pathway. You just cannot have the conversation because when you get exposed to money, and this is the funny thing, and uh, this is about the Porsche. Once again, he's about to start bragging. Let me go ahead and explain that. If you're a wealthy person or a successful person, or you built a business and you've seen success, me saying I'm talking about the Porsche would not come across as bragging to you. It's just like, oh, he stayed now he lived. But if you're a person who is struggling, if you're a person who's never seen any money, if you're a person who can't go to the bank and draw, or take out $10,000 cash, you may think I'm bragging because, see, from an internal aspect, it's not about me. It's about you and your lack of success. That's what it's about. Because every time someone comes here on YouTube, oh, he's bragging. Uh, you know, he spent $400,000 for all these cars. Oh, he's going to come off that. It's not about me. It has nothing to do with me. It's about you. 
and your lack of exposure to success and money. Because every time I see a comment that talks about, oh, he's bragging, I know hands down that I'm talking to a person who has not experienced a level of success. So this is what I mean when I say, if you know me talking about I have a Porsche and if you're a well-adjusted, healthy, happy person working on things and seeing success, you'd be like, that's just, he's just stating something that's in his life. But if you're one of those people who haven't experienced any success, haven't experienced any money, I will come across as bragging because you feel inferior in life. It has nothing to do with me. And how do I know this? In that plane seat, I have talked to 40 entrepreneurs and the conversation always goes the same. Well, oh, that's what you do? Well, this is what I do. And we would have a very healthy, nice conversation. Maybe I would teach them some stuff. Maybe they would teach me some stuff. And it's just a different level of conversation because I'm about to share something with you. The wealthy, the highly successful don't have that many people to talk to. Because as a business owner, you know, you, you cannot talk to your employees as if they're peers. You cannot. And so anytime that you come across someone that's high level, that's doing something that's successful, that has built some stuff and their energy resonates with you, that opens up a massive door because a lot of entrepreneurs just don't have people to talk to. They just don't have people to negotiate to, you know, unless they have built this circle of seasoned entrepreneurs where they can sit down and share. Because typically, I remember years and years ago, I was on the plane and I was sitting next to this woman and I was talking to her. And what she had done is she had created a jewelry line and it blew up. And, you know, she's like, I run the jewelry company. I said, oh, that's great. Is this something that, you know, comes from your essence? And she said, very much so. Very much so. Because every time I create a piece of jewelry, I put my heart and my soul in it and I want it to be reflective. And I said, that's why you're successful because you're not doing this for the money. You're doing this as a creative pursuit. And she said, oh, my God, did you take art? And I said, absolutely, yes. And we had the best conversation. And <clears throat> after I got off the plane, I Googled the lady. Her company was worth $50 million. And, you know, once again, once you have made that path through you know, you've built up your business, you have made money, you get into a really different spot. And this is one of the things. <clears throat> My Porsche gets a lot of attention. And this is funny because when I had the blue Porsche, hardly anyone said a word. And when I had the red Porsche, sometimes, but literally, I, have, I get so many comments about this car because it's yellow, it has a red interior, and it, it is just really, really interesting. And I get comments from young people, old people, and because I am well adjusted, and I'll speak about that very deeply in a minute, so, uh, there was an older lady, she said, oh, I like your car, and I said, thank you. And see, this is why I can say it, because at one point in my life, I wasn't well adjusted. I used to be the deflector of comments because I did not have confidence. I did not have confidence in myself. And now because I have gone through all these changes, you know, the lady's like, oh, I like your car. And I said, well, thank you. And I've had conversations. Uh, old people was telling me that they were setting up some type of Porsche museum where they were living and we had a nice little conversation. And because I am well adjusted, meaning that I understand people, I can take a compliment quite well and keep moving. Because here's the thing, <clears throat> and this is one of the things that I'm going with through with a lot of my students who are setting up the holding companies. I got an email, my wife doesn't understand the holding company concept. And I was like, 
once you start a business that starts cash flowing and making money, things will change. Because see, th th this is the thing. And this is the, that pathway that you got to go through. Until you experience real success, and we will define success as money. You, you've got money. It's all a fantasy. It's all just maybe this will work. Maybe it won't. You don't know. It's just a big fantasy, but until you go through that pathway, until you actually graduate, and graduation is you have built a business that started in your mind, and now your business is making all its money, and now it's real. It's very, <clears throat> very, very real. And once it becomes real, this is when you start to have confidence in your business. This is when you start to have confidence in yourself. This is when you start to have confidence in the things that you're doing. And right now, a lot of people are in that beginning phase. They, they, they haven't started their company. They haven't developed customers. They haven't made money. Going back to that comment that... <laughs> I started laughing when I saw the comment, you bragging. After speaking to multiple entrepreneurs about what I do in my life, that has never been the response. That has never been the response. Um, I remember I was on the plane. I was talking to this guy. It was an old guy. He was from London and his family had gotten a clothing business and they made suits and stuff. And we were just talking. And we we're having a, you know, he, he was a witty chat. He was a witty. He was funny. And I've had these conversations with other people who have been successful in some part of their life. And I can say, oh, I live in this house. I drive this car. I do this. I do this. And not once have those people looked at me as, you're bragging. It, it, it hasn't happened. But typically... The less socially successful, socially successful, meaning that you, you have a business. And one of the things that I used to do, and I'll explain, you know, I want you guys to know, and this is why I was really big on showing receipts, showing car titles, showing ATM receipts, showing bank statements, and all these other things, because I want you guys to have proof positive of the things that I was talking about. And then... I begin to get so much hate, so much hate. And one of the things and the reason that I stopped showing receipts is we live in a very dangerous culture. I could show the receipt to the wrong person. This one, one person could want to gun me down, literally, because I have done well for myself. And this is the reason that I have stopped showing receipts and I have not identified with certain things because I understand that there are some dangerous people out there and all I was going to do was just set myself up for some calamity in the future. So this is why I've stopped showing receipts because this is funny. The, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm like that comment, man. Ah, <sighs> This is one of the reasons that entrepreneurs like talking to other successful entrepreneurs because they can be themselves and they can talk about what they've done and they can talk about their accomplishments without that whole, because, you know, I've seen many interviews on YouTube of successful people and not once have I felt that these people were bragging. Not once. It's just as an occurred, but I remember a conversation that Oprah Winfrey was having with Tyra Branks and they were talking about men and Oprah said something that was pretty key to this conversation. She's like, you need to date a man that has his own because he will not be jealous of you. And I really, cause I heard, you know, she and Tyra, they were like gigging in it. And I really, really thought about that. And I was like, hmm, that's really interesting because essentially, um, 
when you are really, really financially successful, business-wise successful, typically the person that you date, Mrs. the first Mrs. Jeff Bezos is a prime example of that. Jeff Bezos was worth like billions. And I think she got like 30 billion during the divorce. And they have been married like 20 something years. I think they have three children together. And typically um, that comment that Oprah stated made a lot of sense to this video because typically when you're showing people like literally when I was buying all those cars for the car rental company, I literally had people in the comments. He's going to stop off that. He paying the cash. He's financing those cars. I actually showed the titles of those cars that just created so much animosity that just created so much hate that just created such negative energy, just negative energy because there were people who were just dumbfounded. And I'm going to explain to you why they were dumbfounded that I, a simple man from Alabama can get to the point where I can spend $400,000 for some cars. Psst, I could spend a million if I wanted to. Um, it's not anything to do with me. It has everything to do with the person and their lack of success. Because once you get exposed to money, it changes you. It changes your perceptions. It changes everything about you. It changes all of the things that you're doing, it literally changes the way that you see things. It changes the way that you do things. It changes your whole perceptions. Like, um, one of the things is like me, knowing <clears throat> that the chances of me meeting a woman who makes as much money as I do is slim to none. It could happen, but so what I have done, because I was like, you know, any woman that comes in my life, she's going to be my girlfriend. She's going to be my partner. And that's all I'm going to require of her. She don't have to come to the table with any money or any, I, I really don't care. Really don't care. And essentially that is not a attitude that is shared by many men who are not financially successful. They're just not. I would never, ever, like, literally, all of the women, the girlfriends who have lived with me, I've not required them to pay rent. It's never even come up. It's not even part of the conversation. You won't know why, because the rent's going to get paid regardless, because the rent was getting paid, the mortgage was getting paid, regardless. But essentially, when you go through this whole process of exposure and you learn the power of having money and you learn the significance of having money, it literally changes so much in you. And this is one of the reasons like that comment <laughs> or another one like I don't have my wallet on me, but when I was presenting my credit cards and it's like, yes, I have at the moment seven American Express credit cards. American Express is my favorite credit card company. And I was showing credit cards after credit card. And it's like, hey, you're going to faint if he, you, if he popped a credit card, you know, jealousy, just simple as jealousy. And the thing is, this is something that you have to understand. If you were to sit down and work and build and create, you wouldn't have no time for jealousy. You would have no time for jealousy. But one of the things that I want to impart to you is as you build your company, as you be start, because once again, the beginning, the beginning, the beginning is always going to be tough. The beginning is always going to be rough, right? But you go ahead and get that company built you start making that money, your life will change. But more importantly, your perceptions, your attitudes, your mindsets, all of that will change because 
I'm a guy who could not, in 2011, I could not see myself going to the store and paying 100 bucks for a shirt. Couldn't see it. And now, it's uh, 12 years later, went to a Porsche dealership and dropped $265,000 for one car. I would pay two fifty dollars for a shirt. I would spend the money. Th- this, this, this couch I'm sitting on is two couches and two leather chairs. I paid $12,000 for that. Not because it was worth $12,000. I paid $12,000 for it because I wanted it. That was it. Just like I wanted the Porsche. Just like I, I simply wanted that stuff. And I was in the position to get what I want which is the biggest behavior change that you can make in yourself. Getting to the point where you can get what you want simply because you want it. All right, so it's July and we're going to be working on the Intellectual Property School and the Corporate Citizen Playbook at the same time. And the Intellectual Property School, it's got a lot of stuff that's gonna go down. So many things. So all of the stuff is below and you're gonna wanna get into it so you can start building your business from your mind that can create all of this income and revenue for you so you can know what it's like to have money, to be exposed to money. My name is Glendon Cameron. I'll see you guys in the next video.